What's up, fellow modelers? We're gonna dive into this Focke-Wulf 190. We're gonna use some blue goo, some chipping methods, some tape seat belts, and some brake lines. Let's go. So I'm sure you've seen this kit around. This is the Tamiya Focke-Wulf 190A3, and it is an awesome kit. The box art is just beautiful, and there's also several different decal versions to choose from. Uh, and uh, I mean, you just can't can't deny a Tamiya kit. So this is actually my first German build that I've ever done. And so let's just get into these parts here. So these clear parts are really detailed and are really nice. I didn't have to sand anything out. Moving on to the sprue, the sprue has a lot of details in this kit and um, a lot of recessed panel lines, rivets, and things of that nature. The decals are pretty decent. I don't think that they were too thick um, and the instructions are pretty well laid out for you to build this kit fairly easily. This was my only second Tamiya kit, but I still struggle with the instructions just a bit. I'm snipping off some of the interior panels to this kit, uh, getting ready to assemble this fuselage. After unclipping the parts, I used some sticky tack to attach it to a stick, and uh, then I can easily apply it to the, to the model here. Uh, it's just an easy way to get really small parts into the areas that you need. Um, they barely stick to that sticky tack, but just enough to where you don't drop them and have to go carpet surfing for hours. Then I spray the interior with Luftwaffe interior gray, and I feel like this is a really nice and dark color for this. But I had to add a drop of black because it came out a little bit too bluish in the Vallejo color line. Once I spray the base color, I can then move on to interior detailing. The chair was detailed just enough, but it actually didn't come with any seat belts whatsoever. So I had to actually add those in later. Tamiya has a great guide on which areas in the cockpit to paint black, red, yellow, certain colors like that. So I just followed the guide here and did it strictly based on what I thought uh, the directions told me to do. Here I'm using a toothpick to apply black to the um, to black dials in the control panel. This is a tad tricky as you have to be very precise and like have a perfect amount of paint in order to get it, get it right. But I do suggest adding a drop of water in whatever mixture you have just so that it flows a little bit better in those dials. Then I paint the control stick and move on from there. So I guess these rudder pedals are actually silver, which is a little bit of a bummer because I typically like to use some chipping methods on them, but uh, I'm sure I can figure out something. Here I'm using a needle to apply white to kind of try to make a little tiny dial in there and some red on the areas that needs red. Now this is just a standard gray wash. I figured it might accent it a little bit better than a black wash. So I added this first and blotched it with a Q-tip and then added my black wash after. The gray wash was just a Vallejo color. Uh, pretty sure it was just USAF. USAF or German gray, light gray, and I just watered it down real good and brushed it on. And this is Tamiya Panoline accent color. Once that's applied, you can use a cotton swab to just rough out and kind of blend in the areas. And then it leaves you with a pretty nice residue and a nice finish on your interior. Now I found the crappiest paintbrush in my little spindle thing and put some silver paint on it brushed it off in a paper towel and now I'm applying it to the interior here and as you can see it's a great way to accent all of these chipping methods and highlight the details in the cockpit. Here I'm using a bit of sponge to kind of get a rougher uh, different textured look than a brush on the baseline where the feet go mostly and now I'm going to apply some sand in that area too to make it kind of look lived in. So this is actually one of my favorite weathering methods now. I've found a lot of uses for this uh, recently and uh, it's just a great way easily and quickly to, with no cleanup required whatsoever, uh, to apply some dirt and mud in your model where you need it. Um, even like, even fading out decals too, which I show later in the kit too. So 
it's just a great method. I mean, you literally just put it on and you just mush it around with a dry brush and that's all you gotta do. Uh, you can actually water it down and then clean it up really easily as well. So this stuff is very usable. Once you have this smoothed out to the desired effect, you just leave it and that's it. It'll stay on. It's kind of like chalk or something like that. I don't know, but it's really neat stuff. Uh, here I'm just applying some like light tan paint onto these areas. I kind of wanted to make this look lived in. And if you were flying a folk wolf, I think I would definitely pull some G's in it. So I wanted to rip that seat up. And now I'm just applying some tan wash and some different washes to really just accent these colors here because there isn't a lot of detail in this part of the kit. So I just wanted to make it look as best as possible. I always find it best to use a couple of different chipping methods. I like to use a brush and a sponge. Uh, it gives it a different look and a different texture. Um, with the brush, you can kind of do scratches and things like that. And with a sponge, you can kind of make it look splotched. So it was worn over time. Um, that's just my method. I, I just think it looks better that way. I try my best to just make it look as best as possible. And there you can see it just adds that extra bit of touch with that sponge. Now I'm weathering uh, and applying some silvering to this control panel. This is actually a copper color. I noticed on a real Fock Wolf, it was kind of like a copper tinge um, to that bottom part and this middle, that middle spoke was white. So I just tried to make it look like the real thing as much as possible. And here I'm applying some gloss to these control panels uh, just to make it look a little bit more glossy. You're not going to see in there, so it doesn't matter. Now I'm cutting these seat belts. If I were to do this over again, I understand now why people buy Edward seat belts because this was a pain in my rear. I had never struggled this much for a while since I bit the Revel P38, I think. It was just brutal. I'd rather just buy the Edward kit next time with the seat belts and be done with it because it was just painful. Next, align everything. Obviously, it's a Tommy kit, so it goes right together. And uh, don't forget your little polyester thing uh, for your prop. Now, I'm, I bought a new sanding kit uh, sponge thing, and it seemed to work pretty good. And now I'm just rescribing all my panel lines that I sanded after I got the whole kit assembled. I'm using a Tamiya panel line cutter, and this is just going to clean up all my dust that I left behind. Next is one of the problems that I did not think I'd run into with the Tamiya kit. So I'm marking out these areas that I have to actually drill out. But instead of drilling, I use this little needle and heat it up and I basically just melt the plastic where it's supposed to be. Moving on to the landing gear bay is very simple. There's no parts required. You just pop it in and once those uh, holes were burned out with a needle, I can assemble that. A lot of parts uh, to this Tommy kit were actually, I mean, really great, but there were a few fit issues. Here I'm dry brushing the motor and I just feel like this is a, a great method to use. Um, it's always worked for me well and I actually use two different paints. One of the base paints was aluminum and the other one was silver on top of it just to give it a little bit of a different tinge. Um, I also think I painted a few parts with dura aluminum. Now I can assemble the rest of the kit here. The cowling I probably didn't even need to glue on. It kind of just squeezed right in there. So here I'm doing some chipping on the wheels and I painted the outside of the wheels uh, f flat rubber and the inside just regular black Vallejo, whatever. Um, this turned out to be a pretty good, pretty good system. Now I'm painting the interior of the landing gear bay with this green color. I'm not too worried about the overspray on that because I clean it off with an alcohol swap later. Now I'm airbrushing this prop fan and the prop itself with a dark green. And again, I painted this kit with all of the suggested colors that it came with. So all of the things that it says in the instructions, I painted with. 
Now I can use some chipping methods on this prop. Now I'm just using a sponge. I damped it off in a paper towel and then, then I can go ahead and carefully apply this to areas, trying to make it kind of look like scratch marks and different type of textures. Um, you don't want to, I usually use two different sides of the sponge because one side is going to leave the same type of mark if you put it like right next to each other. So I try to just switch them out a little bit and uh, maneuver it so that it's not the same type of um, texture all around. I use the same method here on the nose cone here. Now I'm actually going to assemble the prop and set it aside until the very last day. So this was pretty intricate here. You actually had to hold these at a certain angle so that it glued on right. And here I can show you how I do. I normally don't show this, but this is how I do all of my windows. Um, it is a painful process, but worth it in the end as you can get really sharp lines if you keep your knife sharp and you have new blades at the ready. Um, now I can glue it to the surface with some clear glue, which doesn't work all that well, but it does wipe away with water, so that's nice. And I can tape and put on some blue goo uh, to this, to the rest of the canopy here. I'm, I'm actually used to doing a lot of bombers. So doing any type of, you know, fighter aircraft is like a dream for me because I usually don't, don't have this less amount of taping and cutting to do. I usually have to sit there in front of a TV for like six or seven hours just doing taping on windshields. Uh, so this tape is actually from the dollar store and um, it sucks. Don't use it on anything other than canopies uh, because it's not good at all. It will rip off every single bit of paint that you have on your model. But to use it on canopies, it works really nice. And here I'm using Micromark, uh, some blue goo. I just call it blue goo because it's just blue goo, just blue goop. Uh, this isn't the best stuff to use, honestly, for a model just because you're honestly supposed to use um, like non-acrylic paints uh, for this product. Now I can assemble these innards to the, uh, to the cockpit area here and then put it on. So next, I wanted to see if a chipping effect before I painted this area black uh, would actually work in this model. And I don't know if it did or not. I really can't see in there that well. So, I mean, I don't know if it worked, but it was something I hadn't seen before. So I figured I might as well show it. Now I'm painting the cockpit area, that interior gray that I was talking about, that's like super black. It's like black, gray, German, whatever, I can't pronounce it. And now I'm doing some mottling and um, just applying this inside the panel lines where it's white. As I recently saw a video of somebody doing a white shade and it just looks so much better when you get down to the nitty gritty of this camouflage. What I have in my airbrush is just some Mission Models white paint. Um, it sprays on pretty good, but I really have an issue with white paint. It's very spotty. Uh, it kind of squirts out my airbrush, no matter how high or low the PSI. So if I go any lower or thin it out too much, it's just water. It's been a process. So uh, I got it to a point where I could work with it and then just redo the panel lines after I'm done with it and sand it out a little bit. Uh, but uh, I just try to do my best here. I honestly went a little bit crazy uh, because I had so like I made so many mistakes um, yeah which is on me you know I, I, I didn't spend the time to figure it out or clean up my air wrist properly so there's a couple things that I need to do but here you can see I'm appreciating again uh, just to accent those panel lines better just to get a better contrast when um, I lay this camo down as you know, the camo is pretty dark, so I just really wanted a big contrast to make sure that um, I didn't want to lose all my work that I put into this thing. So um, just trying to make this thing look as weathered as possible, as weathered as I could get. I really wanted a nice World War II feel on this aircraft as uh, I've been waiting years to build it. So with this light blue and this first coat of paint, I'm actually just spotting um, the inside of the panels, not making sure not to get too much um, because I want all that texture to kind of come out in the paint and make it look really weathered. So my dilution is very high. It's like 70% water 
to paint ratio and I'm just I have it on like 23 psi and I'm just going around the centers of these areas to get it some color and then I do a light coat on top of all of it after that and that seems to blend it in pretty good Here I'm using some white sticky tack from actually it's from Hobby Lobby because that's the kind of the nearest store that I have. But the thing is, is that it's not very sticky. Um, so I, I've been ha I had been having some trouble getting this to actually stick. So what I had actually ended up doing, which actually ended up making a better surface, is rolling it out with a paintbrush, and that way I could kind of maneuver it into a more jagged type of look and rolling it out with a paintbrush makes it stick. This is the squiggle pattern that I'm going to use for the front of the aircraft on the wings. It shows on the box art that it has this squiggle type pattern, so I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna replicate it and do it the best I can. It doesn't look like it's an exact squiggle on the box art, so I'm just gonna rough cut it. I use this sticky stuff on the rest of the model, but honestly, I wouldn't go this route with it. Um, if you're looking to do the sticky route, the sticky tack, I would do it at the very last color. Uh, I did this a little bit backwards. So I wouldn't do it this way. I would paint the model, you know, the lightest color, and then the second lightest color, and then the darkest color last. And on the last coat, on the darkest color, I would use um, this the sticky tack. But here, I'm doing the darkest color first, so I did it a little bit backwards. Um, this was my first time doing a Focke-Wulf, uh, any type of German plane, so that's my novice experience for you. But I think that either way, uh, I had to put in a few more hours worth of work to get the to get the effect that I wanted out of it. So it worked out in the end, but it was not ideal. So this dark green color is gray green. Uh, by Vallejo and I felt like it was a pretty good representation of a Fock Wolf green color It's really dark and um, it's it's really nice. I mean Vallejo has some nice colors I've never had a problem with with any of their colors. The only problem that I've had is that they uh, They kind of blotch a little bit. I mean When it's coming out of the airbrush they, it can clog the airbrush if you don't like strain it or something so it, it can cause something like that after a couple of years of having these paints and here you can see the sharp line that the tack made and this is not the effect that i was really looking for um, i had to go through after i had sprayed the next color and fix a lot of these lines because i wasn't looking for a sharp line i was looking for kind of a painted line type deal so uh, here i'm going through and working on those lines, getting those lines smoothed out with my airbrush, making sure that it has the right look. Now this is this gray violet color, which I really like. This color is a sick Luftwaffe color. I, I'm i in love with it, man. It's just, it's just cool. It's just rad. So uh, I'm using the same method with this color. Obviously this color was a little bit lighter, so I had to do a couple more coats um, than the green color to make the accent lines pop out. And of course, after um, carefully going in between all those panel lines, I go ahead and just smooth out a nice coat. Now, a lot of my overspray got on the green, and honestly, it's like half noticeable that it got on the green. And yeah, this was this was not a big problem, but I did end up go back going back later, and I fixed those lines. And here I'm using a lower PSI, about 15 to 20, and I'm just using my airbrush to slowly blotch some spots here with that lighter gray violet color. One thing that did actually happen on this build was every single piece of tape that I pulled did not pull paint off whatsoever, which was a victory for sure. Now I'm putting a gloss coat on for my decals, and here I'm painting the yellow parts uh, that were supposed to be yellow on this model. Uh, this tail was pretty delicate and I really didn't want to get, I usually get overspray and actually I didn't get too much overspray on anything um, after doing this yellow. So it was really nice to do and the effect came out really good. After I sprayed the first initial coat, I added a crap ton of white. I literally added 80% white to the yellow to get it to stand out and weather it a little bit. So here I'm crossing my fingers hoping that nothing comes off and sure enough, 
nothing came off with the model. I was so happy and so pleased that all this tape did not tear any paint off. So here I'm cutting out all my decals before I get everything out. Uh, I actually use a candle warmer to wa keep my water warm and I have a little decal tray and I just keep my water warm. I set out all my decals to the left, keep all my water to the right and make sure that none of my decals get wet so that uh, I'm not too stressed because this is a little bit of a stressful process. I had never used Tamiya decals before and they were a uh, they were a pain. Um, honestly, once I put it on, I needed a gallon of water or gallon of decal solution to even move them a smidgen. And if I move them, they usually move to the wrong area and whatever. So I really had a problem with these decals. I obviously need some skills to, to get through the next one, but, um, it's just something to look forward to in the future and I'm sure that I can get the hang of it. Here I'm using some accent color just to accent those panel lines and make sure that um, everything is looking nice and good on the finish of my model. Again, there wasn't anything wrong with the decals. They were thin enough and they worked just fine. Um, it's just me and <laughs> Obviously, I need a new system to apply, so, um, or I can use more decal solution or extra coats of paint, maybe wait a day until I do the decals, something. But here, I'm just putting on um, this Tamiya accent color and then immediately wiping it off with a rag so that it doesn't set on the model too long. And now I'm using some oil wash, some brown oil wash, to do these oil streaks uh, with a brush. Now I just brush them off and then I put a little bit of thinner on either side and brush again and this usually comes out to a pretty good oil stain. Now I lock it in again with another gloss coat just to keep those decals good and to do my final wash. So here is another example of how awesome this dust um, makeup type of weathering kit is. Uh, it, it works great for wheels. It just gives it a really nice flat dusty look um, to your model. And it comes with a brush to even everything out. This is another kit, it's called Soot, and you can use it to use for exhaust marks. And you can actually just swipe it right along the way, exactly where you want, and it's super easy to clean if you mess up, unlike the airbrush, and I just put in a little bit of white and also a little bit of brown in there too, so that it gives it a nice, a light, nice little color in there. Now moving on to the brake lines. So this is a piece of train modeling Ah, rubber wire, I'm not sure exactly, but um, it worked really good for this and I didn't have to use a lot of it. Uh, very easy to paint. Um, I just curled it with the end of a brush there and kind of made the shape similar to what it looked like in the pictures that I saw and uh, just test fitted it, then painted with Vallejo Rust Effects. Uh, this gave it a really nice rusty look as I saw in some real examples and um, so I'm just doing a few colors here and just to give it that really nice rust effect. Now I'm using some light orange and flicking the paint on it as that tends to spot it with that nice rust color. Now getting these inside of the airplane was actually a little bit tough. Uh, the angle of them, I wasn't expecting it to be a little bit like straight, but it's not, it's a fock wolf, so it's kind of slanted in. I didn't even know that. That's why I struggled so much here but you just put it in a little bit crooked and start your weathering process as everything is together now. I use a sponge to silver the outside, making sure to be very, very careful with this um, as it can just screw up a lot. So I have a dry brush there, I'm doing some corners and I'm doing the leading edge as well with a sponge. It seems to be a nice effect on most of my models and uh, I always like the outcome of it. I always just take the sponge, get it real wet, and then damp it off on a paper towel and then apply it to the model. And also keep a piece of paper handy too because you can test what it's gonna look like on the piece of paper and how hard to punch uh, your airplane with it so you know exactly what type of effect you're gonna get. But I like to twist it around as I'm doing it so I don't get the same effect. This is lead graphite that I'm using for the the, uh, the guns there. Uh, I had ended up painting them flat black and then using this graphite technique in between my fingers to give them a little accent of a gun color. 
going on to the wire. Now this was a process. Um, I have not found the perfect process for this wire, but this works pretty good. So this is uh, medium CA, so you have a little bit of time to work with it. Um, and I just put it on the tail, stretch it out real thin, and use my finger as a guide to put it exactly where I need it, right into that spot right over there. So this is very temperamental though, as you can put too much glue on and it can totally ruin your wire. So just be careful with that and trim the end ends as close as possible without removing the wire. What I like to do is slowly side my knife and pull the rubber as far as possible. Then I can put a blotch of uh, thin CA on one piece of rubber and attach it to the other one and wrap and actually wrap it around the other wire, uh, gluing it to it. And on some of these, I actually seen this wire be a little bit curved towards the middle. So I tried to do that effect and it actually worked out. I did have to finagle it a little bit more than what you saw, but it ended up working out and it looks great. Very realistic. Now I can peel away the uh, masking with some tweezers. This is a painful process as you want to pull at a 45 degree angle with the tape to where you're going so that you don't peel off any of the tape. It depends on when you use gloss, you want to stay away from your windows because the gloss is going to peel way more than any type of flat paint. Either, even if you go with flat paint above it, the gloss is going to peel way more than your flat paint. So just be careful with your gloss when you're doing your coats and stay away from your windows with your gloss coat. And then with your flat, you can go crazy because for some reason it just doesn't, flat doesn't peel. It just, it's brittle. So um, now I'm peeling off that masking tape, which was pretty simple to peel off and it stayed on really well. Even with this all being acrylic paint, that stuff does work. It's just not the recommended. There was a little bit of a paint strip, but thank you guys so much for watching. And here's some pictures. This thing came out awesome uh probably one of my best models that i i think i've ever done and uh, i just had a lot of fun building this and i'm just so appreciative of all my viewers and all my watchers and subscribers thank you so much for watching and um, i hope that my building improves so that you're able to watch more and uh just thank you guys so much uh, if you haven't subscribed please consider to do so and please um, just watch more videos that just helps me out the most and thanks again so enjoy these next couple pictures and I will see you in the next build. Let's get back to building.